Welcome to the fifth North American Mural Virtual User Group, or VMUG, as we like to call them. Um, we have a couple of housekeeping items we always like to start off with before we get into our regularly scheduled programming. Um, so first, we please mute your mic if you're not uh, one of the speakers, um, especially during the presentation. We don't want any unwanted noises. Following and during the presentations, there's actually an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so on the Miro board, there's a uh, orange square for sticky notes. I will go there right now as I share my screen. So down in this area of the Miro board, can leave some questions for folks. Um, and so uh, please do that as much as you like at any time. Uh, you can also drop some comments in the Zoom chat box because um, we always like to hear from you there as well. Um, we can get those messages ported over if for whatever reason you can't get on the mirror board. Um, so that's great, but don't wait for the question period also to be active in the Zoom chat box. You can throw up any comments, how you think things are going, things you'd like to see. That would be fine. We'll uh, try and keep an eye on that as we go. And um, yeah, your washrooms and fire exits are where you last left them. And if I knew where they were, that'd be pretty creepy. So I wanted to first of all thank uh, our fearless leader and guide, uh, Brittany Koshera. She's the community marketing manager from Miro. Um, she's been amazing to get this virtual community up and rocking and uh, keeps us on track and we're growing it, it's thriving. So wave for the nice people, Brittany. Hi. <laughs> My name is John White. I'm a management consultant in Calgary, Alberta, and um, I've been a Miro user for about two years now. Um, and honestly, I still can't give people a straight answer when asked how I use Miro because it's everything, just everything. I brainstorm ideas, do modeling, product and service delivery. Um, I mostly do process improvement work. And so uh, you can do process mapping similar to what you'd end up seeing in Visio, something like that. Transformation projects, both in local and distributed teams. So to say that I'm a Miro lover is a little bit of an understatement. Um, and normally I would go on and on about how passionate I am, um, but just leave it that, you know, I'm super passionate and you should absolutely be using Miro all the time for everything. Um, I just want to acknowledge some of the difficulties that we are all having these days um, facing from, from COVID-19. I feel like it's impossible to do anything without talking about this a little bit. Um, but personally, if I have a soapbox to stand on, I just want to thank anybody who's on the front lines of this. So um, anyone's contributing that the essential services are reaching the people that need it. So healthcare, food, service industry, transportation. Um, I think everyone out there is doing a really great job. You're all heroes in my eyes. So, um, but best of luck to all of us, to all of you uh, and your loved ones in the next coming days and weeks. Let's stay safe and healthy and keep washing our hands all the time and uh, keep on isolating as long as we need and using Miro to uh, continue to stay connected with folks. Um, so I think um, another thing I'd like to say is that um, even though we have these challenging times right now, um, the fact that we're all able to come together around something we share a common interest or passion for is always great. Um, so right now that's Miro. Um, I think for some of the seasoned Miro users out there, um, I feel like we almost had a leg up as this crazy switch happened from going to work to working from home. Um, and I think maybe we were close to as prepared as some people could be out there, which is really a testament to how well Miro works. Um, and so that's not because of how effective a tool Miro is, but because after I've used it for as long as I have, um, my mind shifted to just be more collaborative than ever. And so I think that Miro's kind of changed my behavior in that way. And that's a really, a really cool thing. Um, I had no idea I could be even more effective working in, the, in, in any kind of team, be distributed or not. Um, and so everybody, my team, my clients, they all benefit from using Miro. And for you new users out there, I think um, you're going to be impressed with what Miro can do. It's got the cool sticky notes, which is one of my favorite things, and the undo button, which is also really cool. But there's a lot of other great models and, and ways that you can customize it and make it work for whatever it is that you do. So, um, you know, from using it that first time and seeing other people's mice moving boxes and reshaping things, um, eventually what you're going to end up with is a new mindset uh, in terms of what's possible when you work in teams, regardless of your location. So um, welcome to all the new users and, and the seasoned pros alike for this. So I think we're about getting on to as much as you guys want to be hearing from me. Um, one of the things I wanted to jump in with uh, for our event here was a couple of uh, pro tips that we have. Um, there's always little shortcuts. Um, I'm usually finding out about a new one a week. Um, so one that I found out about, which was great, was the duplicate function. Um, you can control 
uh, a copy and paste uh, items on the board using Control C, Control V, but um, a little bit of a shortcut is just Control D to duplicate it. Um, if you want to select an object, you put your mouse pointer over it and you click. Um, if you want to select multiple objects, you hold the Shift button and drag the shape over the items you want to uh, want to select them all, and then you Control G to group them is another good shortcut or Command-G if you're on a, on a Mac. Um, we have pointer versus pan. Um, simply uh, on my screen, you'll see the little hand. If you hit the shortcut, shortcut V button, you'll switch over to the pointer. Pointer is how you select and move things. The pan only moves the screen as you grab and pull. So it's good uh, in case you don't want to be moving things around, which ultimately happens. Uh, and that's when you want this last tip, which is the undo button. You can do undo if you uh, accidentally move something um, by hitting Control Z or Command Z. And usually there is an undo button at the top of your screen here. But because I haven't messed anything up, it's not there right now. But you'll see that as soon as you start doing any work in here. So those are our kind of pro tips. Um, and I'll also draw your attention to the icebreaker that we had on the board. Uh, feel free to contribute there. Um, we have a map up. Uh, just drop an icon uh, onto where you are in the map and put in a comment saying uh, where you are, who you are, um, and what your organization title is. We have instructions on the, uh, on the board itself. And me being in Calgary, hope you all love the icon that I picked here. Okay, so <laughs> moving along, uh, we have two speakers today um, that are going to give us a great little show, a great little bit of insight into how they use Miro. Um, Jeremy uh, is one of those, and of course we have Iris Latour of Miro. She's the Strategic Customer Success Manager. Um, she spent some time as a design uh, designer, leadership coach, engagement ma uh, manager, and I think her primary focus now and her passion seems to be visual storytelling and remote collaboration. So Iris is here to guide us through her experiences working in distributed teams cross-functionally, and uh, you're gonna take it over, Iris. Thank you so much for that intro. I'm, I'm super excited to be here um, with everyone. And uh, I, I love the introduction that you gave, John, too. Like, we're all kind of dealing with an interesting situation right now. And uh, I was just super excited to have this moment in my day to, you know, think a little bit about, uh, as John mentioned, how Miro has allowed me to think more collaboratively. Um, and it's, it's almost easier to collaborate than it is in person, some, at least for now. So um, I, I definitely want to kind of approach this with that in mind. Um, so what I'm going to do is share my screen. Let me know if everyone can see it. Can I maybe get a thumbs up? You guys can see my screen. Awesome. All right. Whoops, there we go. So I'm going to hop into the um, my part of this presentation. Let me hop into presentation mode. I actually don't know if my slides are quite in, in order. Sorry about that. Um, Whoops, let's back that up a little bit. Doo, doo, doo. Here we go, we're gonna start with brain one, slide brain one. Here we go. Um, all right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit today about how the success team at Miro uh, uses Miro as a second group brain. So uh, customer success, right, we're working kind of on the front lines with our sales teams to really make sure that our, our users are onboarded, enabled. Um, I have the opportunity to work with Jeremy, who's gonna speak uh, right after me. And my goal is really to set up his team and, and folks like him that are using Miro to make sure that they're achieving their collaboration goals. And so one pretty interesting thing about our team that you might not know is that we are not located all in one place. Uh, we actually have a huge portion of our team out in uh, our perm office in Russia. Um, Austin just opened up Los Angeles and Amsterdam. And so the customer success team is actually in a pretty interesting situation. This is a photo of our team. You can tell that we do a really good job at being super uh, uh, photogenic when we get together. Um, but we're really split pretty much down the middle between the Los Angeles office and the Amsterdam office. And so this, I mean, in this photo too, you can see a really rare opportunity that we all get together. Um, and for the most part, we're all working uh, uh, collaboratively, but, but separately, right? Um, even when you get into the Los Angeles office um, with between me and my colleagues, we do collaborate together, but we each manage our own book of, of accounts, right? We're each thinking about different customers. And so our goal really is, let me stop this presentation. I'm going to turn off cursor view. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so our goal really is to learn together and figure out how we can um, better support each other, um, especially if we're working in kind of uh, uh, not necessarily siloed, but kind of lone wolf-esque 
uh, situations where we're really handling customer accounts. Um, we we want to make sure that we are supporting our customers, learning from each other, improving our processes over time, um, figuring out how to up-level as an entire team, grow with Miro, and really grow with our customers as they, um, they become you know, more agile, more, um, more collaborative as well. And we really want to be there as, as experts for them. Um, so one way that we do this, right, is we get on Zoom calls very often. Um, at least once or twice a week, I believe, we actually have Zoom calls. There's really good benefits about being on Zoom together, right? You get to see each other's faces. These are a few uh, snapshots that I sneakily took when no one was, <laughs> when no one was looking, um, just because I really do love my, my team. Um, we, we work really well together. The downside of Zoom is that it doesn't really keep track of what's going on. So you, it's the same as uh, that might happen in a in a in person meeting. You say something and it gets forgotten, right? Uh, it doesn't get recorded. Another great place where we come together is on Slack. We have several uh, dedicated Slack channels, and we love to share ideas. So we're always posting things, uh, doing research, finding articles, trying to learn together. And our goal really is to learn together and and share that knowledge but it ends up getting lost, right? Even these, these four um, posts, I had to kind of search through uh, last night and find them all in order to get them for this presentation. And it was kind of difficult to do. Um, so our ultimate goal is really to grow and learn together, right? Uh, this is a way that we're, we're hoping to improve, like I said, as a customer success team over time. Right, so now we get to go into the fun part where I'm gonna show off the board that we actually created. I'm gonna hop out of presentation mode right now because I'm gonna kind of show this template in action. This really is the backbone of uh, a weekly meeting that we've set up called Customer Success uh, Best Practices. And what we do every week is we meet, we talk about our wins, we talk about our lessons learned, we talk about best practices that we've learned over the week. And even when we started this, um, this meeting, we actually iterated and changed over time and we added another element, and I'm just gonna add that right here, which is as we grew out this board, we decided that we wanted to add ideas and inspiration. We wanted to keep that a little bit separate from best practice. Best practice is a little bit more about, you know, tackling things in real time. And ideas and inspiration is really about looking forward, how we improve as a, as a team, um, uh, uh, as a future, future forward team as well. And so the goal really is every week, leading up to that meeting, everyone will take the sticky that uh, is a, the color that's assigned to them, so mine is pink, and I would put all of my wins, my lessons learned, my best practices, and my ideas and inspiration, right? And I'd put content in there, I might add a few uh, snapshots, right? And every week, each of us takes about five minutes to walk through those lessons learned of the week. And what ends up happening is something like this. So this is a template that we started with. We make sure to record the date, right? And so this ended up being our, our first meeting. We shared those, those thoughts, those lessons learned. We did that every week, moved into December of last year, January. And then by the end of the quarter, you just have a collection of thoughts, ideas, um, tips and tricks, um, you know, mutual support. We're able to leave comments as well. So if I click on this, I can see the, the comments that, oh, I guess I left that comment. Um, but we, we have the opportunity to really kind of learn and teach each other, um, which is, is really fantastic and, and inspirational too. And so over time, you see that we have all these thoughts, we have, we tag them, right? If we wanted to, if we think it's a really good idea, right? Or if we wanna follow up with something. Um, so it's just a really great way to keep track of things and ideas as they spring up. And at the end of the quarter, right over here, we have a new frame. We actually uh, decided to do no stickies this week. We'll spend time doing the quarterly wrap up and archive voting. And so what that means is we actually ran a voting session where we picked our favorite ideas from over the entire quarter and put each of those post-its on a communal place and decided which of those would turn into projects that we would start uh, working on moving forward. Um, and so it's just really exciting to see that, you know, something that we do bit by bit, just by copying and pasting this template, actually ends up being a collection of really fantastic, wonderful ideas. So hopefully we'll be able to finish that up for this quarter 
we might do a, a biannual or annual review, right, and really see what's come out of that. So I'm going to switch back to my board. Look at all my wins that are just fighting. Um, and so that I, I hope just that gives you a sense of kind of how this has grown over time and really worked for us. And um, I also wanted to leave a few thoughts on things that we've learned about actually what the communication process looks like. So uh, being intentional, setting the stage with that template is really important. Making sure that when we set that five minute timer, you really keep to your five minutes that not, not no one's you know, either speaking for one minute or 10 minutes, right? That it really is kind of democratically set up. Um, recording the date to keep, gra uh, to keep track of growth and progress over time. Um, adding emojis to show support for ideas, that's always really fun. Uh, if someone's giving a great idea, you just wanna give them a thumbs up, that's always uh, really great for team building, right? Um, adding links for helpful resources or screenshots to show versus tell has been very powerful in keeping track of those ideas. And so some of the outcomes that we've had this quarter, we're actually able to track back to the original thought, the original post-it that came from maybe one customer success manager, one learning they had. Um, so some things like streamlining our internal processes or setting up interactive workshops instead of demos, right? Um, to, to kind of improve the learning experience. Um, creating a learning board where we all drop our learnings. Um, that was kind of an offshoot of the board that I just showed you. Um, being really intentional about our rollout strategies um, and, and webinars that we wanna host with our enterprise customers. So this has been really helpful for us to, to see, you know, even in the past quarter, where all of these large initiatives and projects uh, came from. All right, so since we're all on the board together, why don't we try this out ourselves? I've talked a lot. And so for the next uh, couple of minutes, I'm gonna have us do the exact same thing uh, that I just presented on my board. So since we're all on this board, and I also want to call out this picture of a brainstorm. This is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to ask us all to meet here. And let me get out of presentation mode. I'm actually going to take this frame and kind of move it out into its own space. So we each have the, the space to work on this together. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to copy the link. Uh, oh, someone moved it. One second. Let's not, not move that quite yet. I'm going to um, lock this down so that we can't move it. I'm going to copy the link and send it to each of you. Uh, da, da, da. Here we go. And so I'm just going to post this in the, um, in the Slack chat so that each of you knows where to come and add your ideas. And the question is going to be, hey, what are some wins and lessons learned and best practices that you've experienced this first week of working remotely? So you can either look at my screen. I welcome you all to start looking at your screens and start adding some ideas. The post-its are over to the left. You can just add some thoughts right here. So a win I had, it's a win I had this week. And if you want, you can change the sticky color. You can add a tag. You can add emojis to ideas you, you think are good. I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for, Brittany, what do you think? Three minutes, is that good? I'm going to set a timer for three minutes. Let's go ahead and add some thoughts. Um, yeah, and if you're having trouble joining the, the board, please feel free to add to the chat. We can make sure to get you on here. Oh, I love this best practice idea someone left. Get ready for work as you normally would. I'm going to add emoji to that. I really like that. I'm going to put a plus there. Yeah, so if you go around and there are some ideas that you think are, are really exciting or would be worth um, exploring, go ahead and add an emoji and that's a best practice. Mm. 
I love this. So I'm able to kind of see in action. Um, I have the cursor view on. I don't know if everyone else has the cursor view on, but if you turn that on, you can really see how folks are adding their own ideas and really collaborating in real time. So we have about a minute and a half to add some thoughts. And if you've already gotten some ideas down, yeah, go ahead and, and add some, some emojis. The ones that need to make better coffee. I, my coffee game is not so mm. good. I'm gonna add this little, this little nerd face to that one. <laughs> Three facilitated sessions with Miro. Oh, that's huge. Let's add an applause to that. That's awesome. Nice job. And, you know, in the last few minutes, we can even start grouping ideas if you see any common themes. That's also a really powerful part of using Miro. Um, so that's, that's definitely something you can do as well. And we have about 45 seconds left. And then, Brittany, if there's still time, I'd be happy to, to do a quick one minute voting session, unless we should move on to Jeremy. Totally up to you. People, yeah. Yeah, should we do it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is great. Exercise, oh heck yeah. I love that. I wonder what people are doing for exercise. Setting up a, a, home, a home gym, right? Take a break to get some fresh air. Yeah, I love that. I'm gonna scoot mine over there because it's pretty similar, taking breaks throughout the day. Keep on meeting amazing people who share passion for collaboration. Ah, that's great. I love the emojis people are adding up here. And if everyone saw that timer, the timer is done now. So thank you for collecting your ideas here. Now we're gonna do one more thing. We're actually gonna vote. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to use the voting plugin. If you want to look at my screen, I can show you how, um, and then you'll get notified on your screen to actually participate. So we're going to do a voting session and vote some, on some of the ideas that we just came up with. So I'm going to call this working remotely. I'm only going to give us two minutes, okay? So we need to get our votes in quick, and I'm only going to give us three votes per person. And so the whole board is selected right now, so I'm going to change that. Oop, where am I? Here we go. I'm gonna change that to just this part of the board. Wow, this board is very big. That's what you get when you invite me in. Oh, I see what's going on. Yeah, no worries. Sorry, I didn't mean to walk your, your secret corner, Jeremy. But here we go. And I'm sure you guys are adding some th thoughts and ideas while I'm doing this. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna select the, se uh, the section that we're all brainstorming on right now as my voting area. So I'm gonna hit done. Now this is the only part where you can add your votes. And I'm gonna have you all only vote on sticky notes because that's how we added our ideas. So I'm gonna start voting now. And once I click that, you should see a little dot appear above the thumb on the bottom of your screen. So that little voting icon, the bottom of your screen will have a little dot. And if you click on that, it'll allow you to join the voting session. So please, uh, please let us know if you're not seeing that, but I'm gonna vote now. I'm gonna ask that everyone look away from my screen or else you'll see what I'm voting for, <laughs> what I'm voting for. And as soon as you're done, you can just go ahead and hit done. And we have about one minute left for the voting. This is pretty cool. Okay, so we have about 30 seconds left. Is everyone finished? Should I end it early? Like kick anyone out? All right, I'm just gonna do it. And voting for all. Sorry, whoever wasn't done yet. And for all. All right, and so now um, if you look at the voting um, 
the voting icon, it'll process the results, and you can actually see which uh, stickies got the most votes. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for jumping in and trying this out. Oh, I love get ready for work as you normally would. That got the most votes as well as exercise. So a lot of self-care, um, right? Really making sure that you're taking your self, care of yourself as you normally would. Um, so thank you guys so much for experimenting with me on this. It was really fun to see your ideas and you know, think about how we're all kind of getting through this, this interesting period together. Um, so thank you so much. And, and that is how Miro uses Miro as a group brain. Amazing. That's great, Iris. Thank you. Hi, it's my pleasure. I wonder, um, you made your session so interactive. I'm not sure if there'll be lots of questions popping up or not. I did have one request um, just after Iris got her uh, presentation going for someone to get a little bit of a demo on adding uh, an icon to the board. So why don't you folks take a couple of seconds to think of some questions you might might like to ask of Iris. I'm going to just share my screen quickly because the section is just above where you were working where you can ask your questions. Um, please go ahead, post them there or post them in the Zoom chat. Okay, so I am quickly, I'm going to move that off because that would be weird. So here is our icebreaker map. And I think this was for Christine. Um, so basically what you want to do is on your left hand Miro control um, buttons over here, there's the three dots at the bottom. If you click that, it brings up a page with some different apps. You want the one icon finder. And from here you can search for win or lose or um, pandemic. And thankfully nothing comes up, but that's how you put icons on. You can then drag it onto the board uh, like so. And up it comes. You can click, you can resize, no problem. So I hope that helps out with that. Oh, we are getting a question coming in right now. So we'll wait in anticipation as Rebecca now hopes that she doesn't make any typos. <laughs> um, I, I would like to ask a question of Iris then uh, as we're just waiting for that. Um, do you have any other means of capturing information that you would display? Um, I mean, first, like your stuff is so right up my alley. Um, part of what I do is, is uh, you know, measuring the customer experience and making sure that people have feedback on what works well and what doesn't. Because if you don't have that information and data, then you can't really manage it. So is there other um, customer-based information that you would be working with to um, um, help your team understand how well they're doing? Oh, um, yeah, that's a great question. And are you asking about on Miro specifically or just generally how we keep track of that? I think, I think generally how you keep track of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so as a customer success team, we do use Salesforce a lot. Um, we're going to start using a, a success focus tool called client success. Um, right. And so, uh, Salesforce is great. Um, you can run amazing reports with it. We have dashboards too. Um, Miro kind of adds that visual, almost strategic element to it. So, um, yeah, I do have, um, I have boards that are specifically dedicated to uh, customers that maybe that's it's a very large account, very strategic account. Um, and that's something that I would share internally with my team as well. Um, mm -hmm. And especially across the sales org and the success org. So we work very closely with our account managers. Um, they get to manage all the hard stuff like seeding and pricing and those conversations that aren't my favorite to have. I get to do right. fun stuff like training and strategy. Um, and so collaborating with them on a mirror board is also really great too. Cool. Cool. Right on. Um, okay. We're just going in here. So questions coming up from some anonymous person. I don't know who that was. Is there a quick way to consolidate content in a number of boards into one board? Um, if they're all the same template or do you just copy and paste the content? Oh, that is a really cool question. Actually. So one thing you can do, John, since you're sharing, go ahead and click on this sticky and click on those three dots that appear. And if you link to, select so link to uh, near the top, you can link to any board, any website, any item on the board. So if you need to kind of create a, a common space or a single source of truth, it's very easy to link to other content. Um, Cause sometimes those boards can get pretty chunky and, and heavy over time. Um, so we might have a board that's dedicated to 2020 and we would just link it to the next board that's dedicated to 2021. Um, but yeah, copy paste, also a very good way to go about that, definitely. 
<laughs> I, I have found on some of my larger boards that things can start to slow down a bit if you're, and that's really pushing it. It's more even than you'd think it'd be possible or appropriate on a board, but you know, we get there, right? So yeah, it helps to break it up and, and knowing how to link things together. That's a great tip. I'm just laughing at Jeremy's chat. <laughs> oh, <right on. laughs> um, and I saw a question from Brittany. Oh, how do you make sure everyone feels hurt? Can I jump into that one? Is that okay? Yeah, give her. Um, so how do you make sure everyone feels heard? Uh, that is such a powerful question. Um, I think the, the hardest part of that is when folks are, it's a combination of in-person and remote. If you have a bunch of people in a meeting room, right? And then other people are remote. Um, sometimes there's, you know, chit chat that goes back and forth that will always happen. Um, and so one way that uh, we've approached this is to level the playing field. If everyone is dialing in in the same way and you have your Zoom screen open in gallery view, everyone looks the same. It's very, uh, I keep using the word democratic, right? Kind of everyone has that same position. Um, and then using that timer, that five minute timer um, allows us to really time box conversations, um, which is really powerful if, if you know, someone is a little bit more long winded than someone else, um, it still gives them the same amount of time. And we always leave time for discussion as well. So do you do have that feeling of having a parking lot? If you don't get to it right then, we'll get to it later. Right on. We have one other question. Uh, are the, there, are, <laughs> there are names floating all over the screen. What does that mean? Mm, that means that we're collaborating in real time. Um, yeah. So John, you could even show the, the cursor view option right up there. So John's hovering aboard above the hiding, hiding the cursor view. So if you wanted to kind of feel like you were in your own zone, you can do that. Um, but these names mean that you guys are on the board with me, uh, collaborating with me right now. So. Um, yeah, you can hover open. above their yeah. icons here too oh, yeah. to show mm -hmm. who's there. You can hit the plus 15 to see all the people and you can always turn the view with a mouse back on. Oh. I love seeing it personally, but for presentations like you had before Iris, better to shut it off, right? Yeah, exactly. It really depends on, you know, what you're doing in, in the situation. That's a great question. Cool. And, and while you're up there, you can always click on one of those icons, to jump to wherever that person is. Oh, yes. That is correct too. Uh, another question came in, uh, can you sort ideas by departments? Uh, yes. So example, development, design, product. Yeah, John, do you want to do you want to demonstrate that on this, these stickies for me again? So uh, John is selecting so, another sticky. Um, and uh, again, whenever you select an item on the board, that toolbar will appear. Um, you'll see an option for tagging. And you can create a tag. So development. Yeah, exactly. John just created that. You can create design. Any, any team that needs to be in the know of a certain item on your board, um, you can tag them. And then up in the upper right-hand corner, if you ever need to search for that content, you can search for any text that's on the board. So let's say we need to find out all of the items that are assigned to design. They just appear there. You can even see that it's a sticky note too. Um, and what John just showed, you zooming in, I think that's pretty powerful also because uh, you know, if our board is super huge, like it is right now, uh, and you really need to track things down and find them, it's, it's pretty easy to do this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, can, mm. uh, maybe, yeah, Ken, Ken just threw in a uh, comment, uh, having a suggestion on why Miro might be so slow um, and lots of users potentially. Yeah, I think that could very well be it. Could be some, uh, some problems. Yeah. Lots of people yeah, on the think, interwebs today. I, yeah, I think that's more it where you're saying, John, not necessarily the fact that there are 14 people on this board, because Miro can actually handle um, quite a, a, a large amount. I've had up to 50, 60 people on the board. Um, yeah, but yeah. It, there's a lot of people just online working remotely right now. Um, so we're doing our best to make sure that things don't get too slow, but uh, it's, it's a, learning, a learning game right now since we're all kind of in this new situation. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I think that is all the questions for now. Looks like it. Okay, so thanks again, Iris. This was absolutely yeah. fantastic and, and great you, little Iris. bit of interactivity. Okay, so now let's move on to the next portion of the show to a man who needs no introduction, except that he does, otherwise we wouldn't know who he is. So this is Jeremy Pollock of Slalom Consulting. 
Um, Jeremy started his career on the IT side of things, pri primarily in uh, networks and servers and security. Um, but with experience and drive comes more responsibility. So he quickly found himself heading in multiple directions. One as a strategic leader, as a director and CTO, and in the other, um, capturing all the beauty of the world via photography and being an author and blogger. Um, it looks like he has currently at least three jobs, but that might be understating things. I'm not sure. Uh, and he might just describe that as a way of life. So Jeremy, he's here to guide us through the process of planning to ideation to final product using Miro with his team. Please take it away, Jeremy. All right. Hi, doing everybody. If you do want to follow along, I've got some content stashed way over on the right. In the main section, there is a sticky note that's hyperlinked. That should take you right over there, though. And let me know. Just want to make sure that you can see my screen. Someone wants to verify that for me. All right. So, all right, let's talk about how I have been using Miro as a second brain. Uh, John, you actually did an awesome introduction. You described a bunch of the things that I would usually say about how I use it, uh, how I, it's really hard to describe. Um, and in fact, one of the things we're going to do at the end is I'm going to show you how uh, I've actually tried to get around that and describe it in terms of building our business case internally. So if you didn't see my initial overview, here's my pitch, right? Let's forget the multi-board sprawl, predefined organization. I love the infinite space. If you see all the whiteboards around me, I don't like borders. So using those infinite canvases to build a big second brain for yourself and then for your team. Uh, we're gonna see some of those ones that do cause it to chug a little bit, but uh, really taking that knowledge and evolving it, growing it from planning to building uh, ideation and, and the, in those final products in a single place uh, and over time. So as a meeting participant, you don't care who I am. You just want to see some big, crazy, cool Miro team boards. And thank you, Jonathan and Brittany. I know they're going to be sitting there in chat uh, watching. If anyone has any questions, that feed those back up. So, all right, who am I? All right, here's the boring answer. I got a couple of them. Boring answer. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a solution principal at Slalom. I do stuff. I have another answer that I, that I give though, which is, hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm passionate about creativity and innovation and using visual spatial communication to explore those spaces between people, strategy, and technology. What's cool about that is I didn't actually tell you what I do yet, just why I do it. And you can take that and I can tell you, hey, it, no, it's Slalom. I help my clients create new ways to understand the whole of their businesses and then act with intention to nurture those systems. But I can take that same passion and tell you that as a photographer, I, I speak in pictures. And with my voice, I describe my view of the intersection of humanity with the natural world. So that's cool. That's the second way. But there's another way to tell you who I am. And that's to show you my brain. So here's some physical versions of my brain. Uh, my boss used to describe, and used to actually introduce me and would take that, look at that picture on the bottom there. She would walk in with somebody and say, hey, this is Jeremy. And then she would invite the person in the room and say, and this is Jeremy's brain. One day I was actually sitting in that room. Somebody walked in and asked me a question. And before they even finished the question, I reached right behind me. And I still remember exactly where it is. And I grabbed a sticky note off the wall and I just handed it to them. And I realized I actually had been thinking about that question that they had been thinking about. It was, it was a different problem for a slightly different client, but it was related to what I'd been working on. It was just an idea that I had. And I just kind of sketched it out, put it over there. And that's really then what is to me what a second brain is and what it does. It is this is the de this is, I love this way of describing it from uh, Tiago Forte. It's really an external, in this case, analog, but here in Miro Digital Repository for all these things that we learn. And it's about packaging those bits of knowledge and sending them forward to yourself or for your team through time. So, wouldn't it be cool? if we could replicate those rooms on the interwebs. We could keep them running without a conference room, especially now when we're all in quarantine. Imagine going back in time when you had that amazing whiteboard that you drew out with your team and go back and explore that. Pull those threads that you had created and pulled out uh, and invite others to play on that journey. So what's Miro? This is how I describe Miro to people. Miro is a persistent virtual whiteboard. It works in person over distances and over time to enable high performing teams. When I first started using Miro, I created boards like, uh, well, like a lot of us create when we start, right? You mind maps, it was, it was amazing. There's some little meta-ness here, right? It was creating documentation on how we would actually 
how to help other people get in and use Miro for the first time. And of course, fun audio setups. But then something different happened. I was going crazy one weekend, uh, learning, created all these sticky notes, and I threw them into Miro. And I just kind of mulled on them there. I figured instead of leaving them on my wall in my living room and getting yelled at for that, uh, I would just let them sit there and ruminate. And as I was doing that, uh, I was reading more, some more ideas appeared. And they started, I, they just appeared that they should be next to each other. So I put them next to each other. And then they started to connect to each other and more and more until the whole cluster that just everything was related. And I couldn't tell you in words why, but I just knew that they were related to each other. And it wasn't just that one topic. There was other ideas, uh, other content I was reading. It just uh, was clear in effect. If you see the picture right here of my whiteboard, that's actually still up on my whiteboard right here. And as it grew, it grew. Eventually I started building these big boards with all of these topics that were connected to each other. So this is one of my brains. And I describe Miro now the same, except I highlight those words a little bit differently. It's still in person, it's across distance, but the over time has really become something amazing to me as I realize what we can build, not only is it a shared space and the ability to put things in synchronously, asynchronously, but we can build, iterate, refine. Uh, and I'm also really passionate about, about the fact that it can give us uh, an equal voice based on all the different ways that we like to communicate to build these awesome teams. So what does it mean to then build a team group brain? So here's the first one that I built. I actually started on this project for a client and we were trying to help them move a whole lot of old undocumented legacy reports. I was in there a week early and I just was trying to put together a picture and explain to my team coming in like what I learned in that first week. So I put that out there. And we, we walked through it. And then because we were artists using the tool, uh, I, I had three experts. They had all overlapping skill sets. And you might've done this if everyone was in person on a whiteboard, but they were actually the team was distributed. So to create this process, this flow of, of how we were gonna work through all of these reports, we, everyone on the, is at the end of the first week, just had to say, go throw some sticky notes out there. Put, up, put them out there and it, it was actually watching those cursors move for the first time. This was that first, oh wow, this is really cool moment that I had using these tools. Now you might notice these sticky notes look slightly different. I won't say another M word, but I will say is we actually took this and pulled it from the uh, one raw tool and then started building on it. Because what we realized was we could take Miro and go from the, that raw ideation all the way to final. So just started building organically. What else could we do with this? We could capture all the information about what we were working on. So we had this common anchor we could always go back to. Anytime we were working in our space, like, oh, hey, are we, are we going the right way? Are we trying to get to the goals that we're trying to achieve? We were exploring all of these um, crazy, I'll just say crazy, um, processes for how this data was, was flowing and, and all the people that would touch it. Oftentimes, I found there'd be four, five, six people that might have a hand on it. And just going through and, and trying to map it out, let us get a handle on uh, just how complex they were. In detail, we could dive in. And then we would actually showed this to the senior executive we were working with just at this high level. And it was enough for him to recognize, oh, this is a little different than we thought, isn't it? Really naturally, we just went in, we went to do our first sprint demo and we used this to lay out all the ideas, what we're gonna talk through. We got it out there and kind of looked at each other and, said, why do we need to do more than this? Why should we, it, it, it's a sprint demo. Why do we want to spend a bunch of time now making slides for this? So we just did the demo here and we never went back because we were able to put our core ideas out quickly, easily, and then jump to the real substantive information we were trying to show. We also then, now, and, and this was not planned. Um, Iris and I showed each other what we were doing the other day, but it turns out we actually built almost the same process to build our, our retrospectives. Um, everyone had their own, has their own color. And what you'll start to notice too is as we went through week to week, uh, they are, we, we started to go back and do retros of retros. It was really cool because there's one big space, one big space. And we could actually go back and see, hey, we said we were gonna do this last week or two weeks ago, how do we do? Is this bigger issue than we thought, smaller issue than we thought? And 
by uh, playing with size and also with the uh, emoji, it let us get a feel for how we were actually doing and responding uh, very quickly. Those quick feedback loops to the, the team could just grow and learn. So I showed you that first, that first um, at the end of the week, what we had put together. And after another a number of more revisions, we ended up with this really robust. And you know, I apologize, some of these I do have to have blurred. Um, so I'm not gonna zoom all the way in, but you can kind of squint and see a whole lot of sticky notes in there. There's so much information captured. And, and just as we would go through, we would just put in, hey, we learned this, we learned this. Uh, so as we were helping them uh, go through the assessment, and then that somebody could come in behind us and actually continue with that work. They have a, a really robust set of, uh, of ways to just think about it and understand what's there today. Now, what's we also realized halfway through, hey, we have to actually do this. So we, we also, again, have people do it after us. So we started making this picture. Now, this is how we were going to do the work. And a lot of times I get the reaction from people like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Uh, how could you have made that? And it is pretty cool. I mean, it's actually three levels of visual depth. As you go in, you can zoom in, you can zoom in, but things we didn't sit down and just build this. Um, we started with that very first picture I showed you. And after a couple of iterations, we realized, oh, we need to make that fork and start adding in how, we, how we're gonna break down this work when we start to do it. And after a couple of versions of that, you see we went back to whiteboard, started working on that a bit more, breaking that out. We kept working on the assessment flow. Okay, now we're ready to start uh, building the actual uh, way that we're going to do the work. And you can start to see some shadows here of what that final picture looked like. Refined it again, refined it again. And every time we went through, this was our living document. So as we were doing the work, we were following this process flow. So it became self-documenting. When we found something new, we found something we had to tweak, we would just adjust it. I was really curious to see what this looked like. So I kept copying versions off and in the end you could see how it just kept growing and refining to end up looking like that final version that you saw. So that was my first big group brain. Now I'm not gonna do a deep dive into all these other ones because I think Brittany might kill me, but I'm gonna show you just a few more examples and then uh, do one more, uh, one more with a few examples. So one of the things I really love about Slalom, and there's a lot of things I love about Slalom, but is that when we think about business development here, it is a team activity. It is about working together towards a common goal. And well, so build a second brain for that as well. We've built out some templates that uh, work for the ways that we do business development at Slalom. And these are actually now available on our enterprise plan, our company plan across all the different teams. So anybody that's doing any business development work has access to uh, the core of this template. But you can see then we also throw in the whiteboards, any notes people take so that we have that common home for that team, whether they're all in the same place or not, can, can be and work and think and build out how, how we're building those conversations with our clients. So what's also cool then is then that knowledge that happens before we start the work can pass right through the teams. So the team's doing the work. Uh, having been on both sides of the fence, there's, there's nothing I hate more than uh, coming, you know, walking into something and knowing there's been a lot of conversations. Somebody knows a lot about what work we're going to do, but the, me on the team, I certainly don't. And so I always want to try to help with that situation. Now, on this particular board, we actually brought, we actually brought the client in as well. So we ended up starting with this change canvas here on the very first day. What is the client's vision? And then just radiated out from there and built out uh, different ways that they were trying to think about uh, a problem that they were having. So this was not just about walking in and having a playbook that we did. This was building out a, a new approach for a novel problem that a client was having and doing that together with the client so they could think about it, think about it differently and go through that journey together. So these can get big. <laughs> this one is an example of something uh, so that absolutely did start to slow down. You can start to see if I zoom in, right? There's a lot of information on this. I did end up actually uh, splitting this one and this bottom third here ended up moving out onto its own board. It was a, it ended up being a, a cons some consolidated information and some thinking about some next steps that we were gonna take. Remember right before I talked about, hey, imagine if you could go back and explore that room that you had before or invite somebody in along with you. So in this case, uh, one of my team members who's now working with another client and is has another person on the team, they have actually spent a number of hours in the last week 
is imagine that first room, imagine walking in and just looking and, and getting inspiration from some of the ideas that a team working on it has had and just pulling those and maybe having to twist them a little bit, turn them a little bit sideways. Um, I see Ken's asking what period of time over some of these projects. I think most of these have been two to four months. Uh, in some cases, the very first one I showed, that was my own brain. I've been building some of that content for almost a year, I think. All right, so last board I wanna show you is we actually used Miro to build our business case internally for Miro. Uh, you've got a timeline on this one for you, actually. So this started back when my very first was saying, hey, I'm using Miro. Turns out, I think a number of other people are using Miro. So the first thing I did is just try to figure out who else was using Miro or real-time board at the time. And as I started talking to some people, it just just getting out some ideas. Like we knew we were gonna have to create a business case and we were gonna, because we're consultants, have to make some slides. So we put a first version out there. Like what, what, what were the messages that we thought we might wanna tell? It allowed us to create a nice simple summary version that we could then pass around internally on, hey, this is what we think we're gonna do for 2019. And uh, I'll call out a couple of things. I, I know there's sometimes other folks may have had some of these similar challenges. Like how do we take it to a larger, um, I really made sure we focused on the, the additional value that we were going to get. Things like uh, having the day passes, and then also as Miro grow, uh, the usage of Miro is growing. To be able to actually share templates, things like those uh, business development templates that I showed, as we grew it ultimately to the enterprise over time. Uh, our market champions. We started working together. It's a whole series of these. We were just uh, starting with that raw ideation and then ultimately getting more and more refined to then this year, building our actual business case at a large scale for the, for the, for the whole company. So last year it was about four of our, four of our areas joining together to uh, support it. And then now it's for all slalom that we've now gone through. So um, we took our internal slide deck that was created for telling this story normally to uh, John's note earlier, you know, it's really hard to actually tell the story of uh, tell the story of what Miro is without using Miro. So, unfortunately, uh, Brittany's going to cry a little bit. Is I can't actually show you the video because I have to redact a couple pieces of it because there is some internal information. But what I actually did is recorded us creating this. So I have about five hours of this all getting built up. So any of you that have used Miro over time, uh, you kind of can imagine is building from a couple of sticky notes to some ideas coming out, order starting to create more and more order emerging over time. And I collapsed that down to a 16 second video. And that is now the first slide of our business case. So you open it up and you're like, well, what the heck is this Miro thing? And then you see a video showing of creating that slide deck in Miro. So, all right, why, why build big giant boards? Ultimately, to me, it's about building team wisdom. It's taking that information that you know, breaking it down, getting it out there in ways that the, uh, the team, your team, you can put it together differently. Like, I love Legos. I love putting things together in different ways. Um, it, and it is just building up that, that knowledge that you can then come back to later and pull pieces of it back apart and put it together into new ways. Uh, three things I'll call out for a why not. Security boundaries very practically, if you need people to access information that maybe um, you only want to share a part of it with. Uh, if you do have a new user, please, please, please don't invite them into your big giant board and expect them to navigate around it. I have made that mistake. <laughs> um, and ultimately, uh, performance. And just as a PS, I will note, uh, I actually, even tonight, I did switch back over to the web browser. Um, if you are using larger boards, I do find the browser version just is able to handle the large board just a little bit better than the native app. So, all right, five tips just to get started. Atomize your ideas, break them down as small as you can. If you have a, if you have a big, big paragraph, see if you can actually break it into parts and then uh, break it into little parts and then connect all the parts together. Uh, create those big broad sections. You probably saw them in a lot of my screenshots, uh, those big sections and headers. That's another uh, lesson learned I had to go through where I knew where things were, but my team that was using it might not know, hey, that's where all the information was, but 
as you create those brick sections, you're also starting to coalesce some of those big themes that are actually coming out. And start small, that organic growth is really important so that uh, you, you're actually building it together as a team and those ideas emerge and you know play. It is open, it's infinite. If somebody wants to go create something interesting off to the side, kind of like I dropped this big giant presentation off to the side, you know, they can do that. And by starting to create frames and what spaces, you'll notice all of my frames, always, I always have a white background that, that, that sets them apart nicely. So you can start to see where the uh, more evolved or information might be. And then last share, you know, it, it's always, it doesn't help if it's just sitting in the virtual space. You know, some, some folks that aren't used to using Miro yet, they don't necessarily understand what they're looking at. So it just like, anything, it's making sure that we are reaching people um, where they are expecting it. So at Slalom, that often means that I am taking things out and throwing them into slide deck, sometimes e even just a screenshot. Uh, you'll notice a lot of my things are 16 by nine. That makes it easy to do that or to just uh, print them out if you uh, do if you uh, do need to do things on paper. So I'm going to stop there. People have questions, answers, want to throw some virtual tomatoes. <laughs> we have one I, question. No, we have a few. Yeah, we have I think a, quite I've got a most few. Of them. Well, first of all, where okay. have you been my whole life, Jeremy? Oh my God. <laughs> we're, we're having some talks coming up here. So, all right. <laughs> So uh, you already answered uh, the first question, which was over the period of time, uh, how long were the projects? Um, so this next one, thanks for the insight into your brain, I think, is the management of this level of detail in Miro oppressive? Is it worth the effort for most people? Um, I, what I guess I would say is this, this came natural to me. And I have done it now with a number of teams and it has come naturally to them. What I had to learn was not to force it and I had to let the team it emerge with the teams. Um, because it comes naturally to me, I often went big fast. So that is a lesson I, I had, did have to learn of, you know, make sure that everyone is going along at, at the same pace. Um, the, the one that I had showed you down here was, was actually uh, was actually done by, I think I was a part of that change canvas. And then it was a team that I just worked with a little bit and they actually built this out themselves. So that was one of the other, oh, that's really cool moments. But it is really just, it has to be organic for it to, to, for it to work. Right. I love how you said it came naturally to you and, and anyone who's got that analytic brain it's going to come naturally to you too and uh but but i think it has enough options for pictures and words on both end of things you can get all kinds of people with all kinds of preferences into it and i will add uh i always when i start using Miro with a team i always start with something that they don't have to be do so for example if we start say with retrospectives and i will make sure that i do it in a way that i can add all their feedback for them there has then I have also always had at least one or two people that are super excited about it. And then before long, even my, even the, the uh, most staunch resistors always end up jumping in. And in the end, I have yet to have a single person not uh, ultimately come around and be like, wow, okay, this is really cool. Yeah. I've had a similar experience. It's, it's the, you just keep trying and the people realize that if they don't use the tool, their feedback won't be included. And this is the best way of doing it. And it just naturally happens. Yep. Um, next was around the blurring you had done on some of your slides. Were you able to do that through Miro or did you have to do that in a different way? I did do that outside of Miro. Any yeah. tips on how or is that uh, trade secrets? Nope, not trade secret. Uh, so I've used a tool called Snagit for many years mm -hmm. and that does have an editor in it that's really easy to then just go in and do blurring. That also, you know, so it, it's both screenshots and then all of the blurring. Yep. Snag it for those of you who don't know, you hit your print screen button and it actually changes your mouse cursor so you can select only the part of your screen you want to snap. It's a pretty cheap program, very useful. I love that one. Okay, uh, next would be how would you characterize your corporate culture at Slalom, pre Miro and post Miro? Any changes or differences worth talking about? 
Um, so that's an interesting question because our culture at Slalom is different than anywhere I've ever been. Uh, we are using Miro a lot more now, but what's what's actually cool about Slalom is that even though we are a national international company, we are very local focused. So every market I work like in Hartford, uh, Connecticut, and we are our own sub company. And uh, but actually, I saw Jen Olson on the line before. She's actually out in Seattle. But yet, we still get to work with each other and and build on each other's skills and expertise. And in fact, I know Jen because of Miro. She was using Miro previously, and we've actually been communicating about different ways that we might be able to use it uh, to help our clients right now as we're suddenly trying to figure out how to do things like uh, PI planning and uh, f facilitation sessions remotely. So it is it's definitely allowed me to uh, connect with a lot of new people. And I think we're right now in the point when a whole lot of new people are starting to use it. So I would actually love to answer that question again in four to five months. Right on. Uh, next one's a two-parter. Uh, first, how do you index your ideas and how do you show the relationship between those indexed ideas? It is emergent. So as things grow. Um, I Let me see. So when I, I know I showed like this large, the large board over here, that was my brain. Uh, this really became emergent over time. Um, I just put things out there. Some of these blue ones are actually linked to other boards because things were starting to get too big. But you know, I think I'd showed this picture here. Like this started with these five stickies and these three stickies, and beyond that, it it just it just kind of went. And as part of where I, I mentioned before, the the infinite canvas, you know, not not having a border to that to worry about, um, and then just making sure that you know, so all of these colors mean something to me, and always making sure when you're working with the group to have a legend for everything you do with the group, so that they know what it is that a certain color means or a certain setup means. I love all the talking you've done on bringing, uh, especially new users along. Um, not only can they inadvertently mess up stuff on your board, but if you leave them in the dust and, and they're too overwhelmed, they won't participate. They won't get in on it. Yep. And that's what you want. So going as fast as the slowest person is often a good way to start. Yes. And if anyone is thinking uh, to start using it for facilitation now, uh, one lesson that I'm actually going to be adding to my protocols going forward is I will be adding a 20 to 30 minute session before any event to really have a one-on-one -on -one session. Because there seems to be a, a say, you know, there's 20, 30% of people that um, have, I found just struggled and to John's point, I mean, if I've made that mistake, right? Throw people too much in the deep end and then it's just disengagement. Yeah. I actually um, w was helping Ode in the background on a facilitation today and even having that resource around to help people along, correct small mistakes, throw in funny icons. It just it shows people what's possible and gets people participating. And if you have a workspace, you can make it your own. I mean, Jeremy yeah. wants the white background, but maybe you want icons and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. <laughs> um, another, another question here, is there a way you track ideas that um, culminate to an action, I believe is what they're trying to ask there. And here you might talk about the um, cards and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think this this board is probably a good one to sort of look at there because this, is, this grew from a lot of sprawl, but then that also goes to the, the you know, I create these frames so that I know, hey, these things are becoming uh, real. You know, you notice some of these actually have gray backgrounds here, but then throwing in cards with tags as well. Um, so again, these are pretty large, so right now they're not interactive, but you can see across the top of this on a number of cards. Um, and then this space here was actually a Gantt chart. It'll start to float out there. And so like, that was something that was ready for a slide. One of these sticky notes over there had a had a tag on it. So I could go up there, just search for tag and see, okay, everything that's has these tags is either finished or it's been used, um, or it might also sometimes be connected to a certain idea or concept. Excellent. I'm just going to uh, allow, if you allow me to share my screen for one second, Jeremy, I can show people one other way of potentially tracking that. Absolutely. And I'll 
and well, uh, Anne asked the question, do we have C-suite folks using boards? Uh, I actually sent the business case to my GM when we had first built it out and I wasn't really sure what was gonna happen. He logged right in and I think it was this first one over here. One of these comments is actually his. So he actually logged right in, figured out how to navigate around and went in and he put a comment in here and another one here about, hey, you should also go talk to this person. Our chief experience officer, who is one of our co-founders, we used Miro recently to create, uh, over about a six month period, create one of our new slalom wide offerings that we've been developing, pulling experience from people all across the company. And he actually became then one of the, one of my champions supporting bringing Miro to all the company. And uh, he, he just was amazed and he made the statement to me that it was, I don't, I, this is a paraphrase, so I don't <laughs> misquote him, but essentially seeing how Miro worked with some of our strong agilists and then a distributed team made him a true believer in agile because now he saw what the tool could, what the right tool could do to allow agile at scale over distance as well. Yep. Well said. Um, okay. Yeah. If you just give me control for one sec. Oh, yes. Thank you. Sorry. I forgot to gotta do that. And so good. Um, so here's another way that you can track tasks and get some calls to action going is, uh, Miro, uh, on the paid accounts anyway, has a built in Kanban board. Uh, all a Kanban board is, is a simple three column tool you can use to track your to-do list, uh, what you have going on in progress and what you have done. Um, so Miro, these cards here for each of your tasks are actually pretty interactive. You can pop them open. You can put in tons of a description. You can tag these as well. You can assign them to people and you can set deadlines while they're getting notified when a deadline is coming. And as your project is progressing, you can just simply drag tasks to the proper column and then finally over to the done column. So it's a great visual to show what you got in the hopper, what you're working on and what you have completed at the same time. Um, you could use stickies for this, but just because of the interactivity of these cards, it's a, it's a really nice addition. Pretty recent in the last six months or so, I think from Miro, maybe a bit longer uh, and a welcome addition to uh, much of the project management uh, that I do for my projects. Yes, and I'll add on to that. The, if you are using uh, Rally, Jira or Azure DevOps, you can to varying degrees, uh, connect it to those tools. Uh, so uh, Jira in particular actually does allow to bi-directional syncing. And I, we have had a couple of teams use that over time. And uh, I have buried in a couple of those giant boards are some, some large Kanbans uh, and other status trackers that we've created both with stickies and with cards in order to track that, that information. Very good. Um, I think uh, it would be cool, um, but since the presenters are done and people might have some other questions or just want to get involved in the discussion, now would be a great time if anyone wants to unmute and um, ask any more questions or, or see anything. As that kind of progresses, I'll just draw your attention again to my shared screen um, for some of the, the tail end things that we'd like. There's opportunity for some retrospective of our own here. Um, one of them is through taking one of these dots and placing it on the uh, board here based on two um, uh, two scales. One is the level of knowledge uh, that you've gained. So the higher up the po dot you put, the more knowledge you'll say you have gained. And then the degree of knowledge you can apply to your work will go over on the far right. So if you're like me and you learned a lot and can apply it all, I don't know if I can put this anymore up in that corner. Um, both you guys were amazing. Uh, and then just below that, um, there's a spot for um, some sticky notes to be dragged over into our accolades, improvements, suggestions. If there's talks you want to see in the future, we certainly take all that into consideration. And your feedback is so important to us so that we can keep planning these great events and uh, make Brittany look good. Um, so with that, I'll uh, kind of open the floor if anyone wants to have any final discussion, thoughts, comments. Uh, if there's any first time Miro users out there, maybe you'd like to chime in with a bit of how you're finding it so far. And we certainly have a team of a couple of experts here who can help you um, build more than probably you ever thought was possible. So cool. <laughs> Every time. It's just it is. cool. <laughs> John, do you want to maybe click my icon? Just there's a question in chat uh, sure. about how to find people. Are you here? 
uh, and the black and white picture up top. Oh, so well, yeah. Stop popping up. Sorry. And it's not working. There we go. I was maybe not waiting long enough. That's Noel. You can click on mine, she, if you want. All right, let's try on Iris. There you go. She's down in the retrospective. I don't know why it's not jumping to you, Jeremy. You're too I, far away in your corner there, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am on my iPad as well, so maybe I'm confusing things. Oh, then it wouldn't know where your cursor maybe is. Yeah. Yep. Well, oh, good. Leave it to me to break stuff. Yeah, it looks like there's a, another question. Could you briefly yeah, I, discuss user management and notification? How can how each user can be notified? There's a there's a I think a few ways to do that. Um, maybe Jeremy, I can give it a try, and, and you can hop in and add what you've done. But um, comments is really cool. Oh wow, who who's sharing their screen right now? Is this it's John. John. Yeah. Okay, John, you're you're like my second brain. Um, so comments <laughs> are a really great great way. You can actually uh, connect this to Slack or email, however you like to be notified externally to Miro. Um, but there's also a really great way for you to, um, if you hop into a board, you can view all the comments that have been left on that board uh, right down at the bottom. And you can also view all the comments where you've been tagged. So if John had been tagged in any comments, he hasn't. So he has no to do, which is great. Um, and yeah, and so if you, if you want to keep track of your to do's and, and hold each other accountable, comments, I think is a really powerful way to do that. Um, Jeremy, John, I don't know if you've used any other ways, Brittany. Yeah, I really so, just use the comment feature yeah. quite a bit. Like, just especially working remotely, like with my manager, and I'm just like, hey, I need you to focus on this real quick and just attack them. Um, and then I definitely use like the color coding, like, mm. I need to pay attention to this, I need to pay attention to that. Yeah. And I'm not sure I can get into the more apps with the permissions I have on this page, but um, if you do get into the apps list, there's a, a million plugins um, that Miro links to, like uh, like Trello, MS Teams. I think we talked about most of those already. So, yeah, you can get notifications through all that. It's great. Yeah, these notifications are great, and you can also link to any object on a board as well. So I'll also use that, especially on some of the larger boards. A link directly to a frame or even an individual object if it's somebody that is uh, less used to getting the notifications in Miro. So you can then send it as an email or put it sometimes in a Teams conversation we might be having outside with a link right back. I think uh, Iris actually did that earlier oh, when yeah. she linked the, mm -hmm. the section for us to work on. So most of you might have found or, or been through the Miro events page. They, you know, these two circles down at the bottom of the page under the retrospectives links directly to websites. So there's lots, lots and lots of linking you can do to keep people connected. Any other thoughts? Any, uh, any new users out there want to comment on what they're thinking so far? I'd love to know people that have used Miro before kind of what your first experience was like like if you can like go back and think like what was that like i'd love to hear annie natalie just throwing people on the spot <laughs> <laughs> i work with Brittany and iris um i actually work directly with Brittany um as an event coordinator i'm pretty brand new um but i Applied to Miro because I used them when they were real time board when I was going to grad school. Um, and I just started, to, I just discovered them through um, a startup that I was working at at the time. And it was super helpful when I was coming up with my master thesis and my capstone and like collaborating on certain projects. So I definitely got some of my fellow like stu colleagues like onto real time board at the time. And it was super helpful. Um, and the reason why I liked it so much was because it was so much easier to use and much more intuitive than the graphs that you can make like on Google, um, you know, their chart system. So that's kind of just how I used it. And it was really easy, um, especially as someone who uh, was just trying to like get all my thoughts down and trying to create this like humongous capstone with like not a lot of, you know, 
just needing a better platform to kind of facilitate my thoughts and like getting them all down. It was super easy. Um, so I think for me, that was like always the charm with Miro, real time board at the time. Um, just that it was so easy to just like jump in. Thank you. And for me, I got endorsed to Miro, I think two years ago uh, by one designer that I had in my team. And that time we were just building our, like uh, our first startup and suddenly we realized we got people from other cities. So we had to do something remotely for them as well. And she just came up with me, uh, to me using this board saying, now we need to do the session and here's the tool. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, it was an easy way for me to use that because she already set up the st structure and she asked us just to use stickies, just put in that place when you do the voting. So for me, it was like, okay, it's just the same stickies I have. It's just a virtual one. That's easy. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. We're getting a lot of chats in this group chat. Yeah, it's great. I'm like, yeah. Is there a way to compare versions of boards? Mm. So versioning is in progress. More to come. No dates, but that is coming. <laughs> um, but versions of boards, the way I've done that is I will copy a board, you know, it's very easy to just duplicate it and you can give the first one, you know, version one or the date, right? Um, and then just kind of compare boards over time. Um, that's the way I've done that as a workaround. I don't know. I don't know you guys have other ways to do that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's me too. Yeah. Um, All right, any final words as before we sign off? Thanks, Natalie. Good to see you. Okay, let's call it a day. Um, yeah. This is like one of the best events yet. This is this is great. Great conversation, great presentations, great discussion. Uh, I feel like a lot of new users were here and they they probably learned a couple of new tips, which is always great. And uh, mm -hmm. community.miro.com and events.miro.com. Is that right for both of those? Yes. Yes. So um, we'll continue the conversation in uh, community. So you can click on that community.miro.com. So the conversation doesn't end there. I will be posting um, the video and a link to the board in this community site so we can keep the conversation going. Um, and then we have a few more events that are popping up that will be virtual. So I'm excited. April's a very busy month for us. <laughs> yeah. I bet, I bet. Right. We'll keep an eye out on those sites. Everybody sign up, get a, get a, a username and password. And thank you so much for coming. This is just terrific. And we'll see you in the virtual world. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See ya. Thank you.